Welcome to the Encore today. We're going to talk about discipleship. I know it's a little bit of a Christianese, churchy word, but we'll kind of talk about that, what that means, what it doesn't mean, you know, what it looks like for us, and um, some different things. So there's there's a lot to say about it. Uh, the true, you know, we've we've had some pretty heavy topics in the last couple, maybe yeah. months, yeah, forever. We still have more coming up, but there's other things that we want to talk about. So we'll we'll sprinkle them in and. Um, do them on different weeks and all that, but today we'll talk about this. Um, and, and you know, we had our grand opening of our new building last Sunday. Yeah. So part of it comes from that, where we're going to talk a little bit about um, kind of the Rock's mission and how discipleship mm-hmm. falls into that. Yeah, great. So I know a lot of people probably heard uh, probably the sermon this past week, and then they might they might wonder what what about the discipleship portion, all of that. Mm-hmm. So we'll get into that, but Sounds but. Great. Middle of summer, not the middle of summer. We're like right at the beginning of summer. It is hot. And yeah, man, we've got some. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's okay. It so you hot. decided to go uh, go skiing yesterday. Mm-hmm. Guy asked me out. He goes, uh, newer guy to the church. Uh-huh. And he figured out I was a slalom skier. And he goes, uh, you, still, you still ski? And I'm like, well, I would, but. A lot of people don't have ski boats. Like I know, I don't know. I don't mean to insult your. Well, uh, yeah, no, I'm not. There insulted. is a. There's such a thing as a straight up ski boat. Everything else. I do is, know that. Yeah, I couldn't tell and you. Most people don't have it. They I couldn't have, look at one and tell you what's what's one or the other. So but I do skiers know that. are super snobs. Mm-hmm. I am definitely that type, type okay. of person. So if okay. you're like, oh man, take me out skiing. The yeah. first thing I need to find out. Well, what kind of boat you got? Because you can't cross the wake. Mm-hmm. On like a hybrid boat, an all sports boat, definitely not a surf boat. So everyone's got surf boats, you know. And yeah. I go, I would, but nobody has a ski boat anymore, not a real one. Mm-hmm. He goes, I do. So I go, of course, you know, politely. I'm like, oh yeah, what do you got? Because mm-hmm. I'm thinking, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he's legit. And uh, so he told me, and I'm like, that is a real. Uh, so in my mind, I'm like, oh, you're a re- you're an actual skier then. Mm-hmm. And so he called me yesterday because it was ninety. He goes, any way you can come out here. And I happened to be leaving here on my motorcycle, and it was perfect. And mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? I can. And so I went out, and now I'm limping severely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was talking to Neil yesterday, talking about your ski thing. And I'm like, dude, you know what? I'm like, he, he's going to get hurt one of these days because we're all over. We're getting old, dude. We are getting old. I refuse to accept this. I know. I know. So I was working out a solid two months ago. Mm-hmm. Fell off a box and you know laying, yeah, laying you like did, this, yeah. sprained. I think sprained. Whatever. I don't know. Hurt both of my wrists. Mm-hmm. Two months later. Yeah, right. I am not fully recovered. And mm-hmm. we were talking about this. Like you, you remember when you, and when you were kids, you would just wipe out off of your bike, get some get some strawberries or whatever, a little yeah. blood, and then but just get up and go. Yeah. I don't ever remember being sore or having not more than long term injuries. Yeah. Yep. And even in college, you know, I would mm-hmm. roll my ankle a hundred times, but I don't know, you just move past it. But now mm-hmm. it's like like it's catching up to us. But you said it's not gonna stop you from I'm not doing stopping anything. Nothing. No, not I at was all. Bringing huh? it, I was bringing oh, everything man. I had. So slalom skiing is a high impact sport. Like if you're yeah. if you're really doing it, you know, it takes time to like yeah. kind of learn it. Yeah. So I've been slalom skiing because my dad was a my dad was a Gestapo. My dad wouldn't even let us back in the boat when we were mm-hmm. kids until you know we had to oh one more time one more time you know yeah. <laughs> and I'm like I don't want to do it anymore. He's like well you kind of have to so kind of have to. But I but at, later I came to love it and so I used to ski a lot um, and it, you know you just get away from things. But uh, it, if you fall. It's not, it's typically bad. I mean, you're flying. And I so, bet. so I did. I came a little hot, uh, got a little too comfortable early, and I wiped out and twisted the ski and tweaked my ankle. But you know Are what? Are those designed where the skis will pop off? It comes off, but I fell okay. in such a way where okay. it tweaked first. It did come off. All right. But after it jacked my ankle. And then, you know what I did? I knew it was going to swell up and it was hurting really bad. And mm-hmm. I was so disappointed with my run. I put the ski back on and did a second run up and down the lake before it got swollen. <laughs> did it hurt? Uh, not while I was not, skiing. Yeah, the adrenaline. Still and then later, I, you know, so then I'm oh, like, man, man, I can't do anymore. So they dropped me off the dock. I get on my motorcycle. I come up to the mm. stop sign. I put my foot down to stop. I almost tipped over because my foot didn't, you know, it hurt yeah. so bad. But you know what? It's feeling a little better today. 
Yeah, you were not as limping as much as I thought Mm-mm. coming in this morning. No, it actually feels a little, a little better little this morning. More, it's but, swollen and stuff. Uh, but. Yeah, I'm interested to see if it's black and blue or whatever. But not stopping nothing, man. As soon as it feels better, I'll be. I'm pretty hyped. If if he calls me next week, I'll go out and give it everything I got. Oh man, I'm all about slowing down and stopping stuff. There's stuff I won't do anymore. I'm what? Like, well, for instance, I've I've never been a, I've never been a skier. Mm-hmm. I tried it when I was 10 or 11, I can't remember when, and then I did it for the first time last year. Okay. Uh, maybe it was two years ago, I can't remember. And I just said, that was fun, that was great, I could check that off the list, no interest in ever doing it again. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that I can say I did it in this. But that's adult. just something you don't, you're, maybe you're not into it. I guess, that's, I guess that's old. true. You just but hold like, on, eh. Work, working out... There are people in the gym that are all about personal records and maxing out and yeah. extending. Also, not what you're into though. This is not an age thing. Oh, okay, okay. You're not. Maybe, you don't yeah. have an ego trip to. Oh, I, you know, I bench right. this much weight. But I got no problem scaling back the weight to go. I'm just not here to hurt myself today. That's because I don't care about working out. In fact, I <laughs> okay. hate it. All right. Right? No, you're, you're right. I'm not going to stop playing like, basketball. That's no, fair. exactly. Yeah. You blow yourself up constantly playing basketball. You're <laughs> yeah. gonna rip. It's been a while since I've had a good injury. It's been a while. Well, Shouldn't have ankle, said that. <laughs> Maybe, but there's injury. wisdom in how you play too. You might know how to. Oh, play Oh, I don't better. leave the floor anymore, yeah. dude. You're mm-hmm. right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You might know how to play, but I haven't yeah. learned that either. I come set shot guns. Sammy for sure. Yeah, Remember no. we played those kids this year, and I got hurt doing that. You did, yeah, because yeah, you don't know how to. You don't know how the. I was coming like me. Kobe yeah. on those kids. Oh, I, I was giving yeah. everything I had, got hurt instantly, and sat out the rest of the game. <laughs> oh man, yeah. There's some. Uh, well, uh, there's there's two kids in our church that are now young adults. Both of them, I used to play them one on one at different mm-hmm. times, uh, and just destroy them. But but they got to an age where I was just like, it's over, dude. It's over. Like no, it, I can't, it, the clock I can't ticks hang and... anymore, and I don't even want to try. But they That's got different. bigger and better. You didn't oh, get worse. Well, no, I got slower. Five sure. percent. No, you're right. They were 14 year old kids. Now they're 20, so they're full size. Humans. I propose to you that you you haven't stopped doing anything that you want to do any more than I have. Anything you want to do, you're going to do. You might be right. We were somewhere where we were uh, a couple years ago, and you were jumping off cliffs, and you were, you were doing all of that. Yeah. Was, that was three years ago. Uh, it was a few years ago. One, two, yeah. three. It was three. It was 2020. No, 2019. It was four years ago, right? That's three. 19 is three years ago, but yeah. So, so. <laughs> Good one, math. two, three, four summers. It's four summers ago. No, it's 2022. Okay, this summer. Count. Oh, if you're I'm counting, counting now. This, I see. <laughs> okay, yeah. Today's okay, like the first one, two, summer. three. Oh, you're, yeah, right, yeah. you're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah, three. But you, you, you were doing that. You would do it right now. You play basketball right no, now. No, you're right. You don't you're care right. about water skiing. You don't care about weightlifting. But you do. You would do either one. And I think if we were on the lake, I could talk you into trying something if you if you were interested. But you're just not interested. You're like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're trying to get me to go play golf again. Yeah. By the way, man, I don't want to. <laughs> you were a golfer. Come on. What? I, I'd never, ever, ever have asked you this. We we, we, we played golf the other day for uh, Dan Smithers' Key of Hope outing. Mm-hmm. So, and everybody asks, hey, who doesn't, why doesn't Wes come out to this? Why doesn't Wes come out to this? Oh, Is my he, gosh. Really? They're all out there. Uh, a lot of people have asked that. It, th- not necessarily well, Number sad. one, you put it on a Monday, which is the worst day for every pastor, but. Uh, yeah, I understand. But, um, and I said, well, Wes actually used to play golf quite a bit in college. What was it? I don't even know the answer. What made you say all of a sudden one day, I ain't do it anymore? Yeah, I mean, I don't have like a line where I refuse, you know, like, oh, I won't play golf. But it's pretty it's, close. It's, it is pretty close it's pretty because close. it's so far down the list. Here's okay. the deal. Uh, yeah, I, so. I did play a lot of golf, mostly with you. Yeah, in college we played yeah. a ton. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Was, yeah. I mean, multiple times a week. Most of mid our class, we, we would leave class. We had a golf class. <laughs> we had a golf class. I know, and we were awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll tell you, it just got really boring for me. It just. Do you I, remember like a tipping point? Like no, what was it that- I think. I think once I got married, I just didn't want to leave the house. I thought, like, I'm going to leave 
Aaron here and go play golf for four hours? Like, I don't want to do that. Like, I just want to I want to be home. Okay, don't say it like that because you'd go skiing or doing other activities. Most of the time she comes with. Okay. Yeah, most of the time she's there. So you're a super husband. That's really what it's it is. It's not about being a super husband. I just don't. There's so rare of an occasion where I'd want to leave by myself. I don't leave by myself very often. Um, and if I do, it's like on a hunting trip or something mm-hmm. to another state, mm-hmm. but I don't have anything. I really go, I, 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 I'll say this. I'm trying to think about, I don't have anything I go do by myself because I don't want to. I just don't, I don't judge anybody who does, I guess. Like, I don't, you know, I, I think get, you are, I'm not, I just, that you, you asked me to explain. So Fuck. she's, I, she's, not, she doesn't care about golf. I don't want yeah, her yeah, to yeah. care. Like, I, you know, I go out and then, all of a sudden, I'm hot, and you know, it's like you're, sudden, you I'm paid hot. this money, and, and it and it takes too long. Like, man, we we're still out here. Like, so then a lot of people want to play 18 holes. That's like 12 holes too long. But I could get, I can get through nine as you've witnessed. But you've said it. I've played with you. I ch- after about three or four holes. Oh, you're checked out, I dude. Can't I know. Stay in it. I'm like, this is so stinking boring. We're gonna do this again, the exact same thing. Like somehow along the way. And I, it would coincide with being married, I think. It just got, it got real boring for me. Mm. And I just, now I will say, like, we've been at men's retreats or something, we'll play, and I yeah. think, like, I'll play, and I, if I'm playing well or I hit a good shot, I enjoy that. Mo- I'm like, oh, shoot, yeah. you know, let's let's finish the hole and blah, blah, blah. But again, three or four in, oh, you're, it's and it's over. like, all right, well, it's let's over. get out of here, man. I've been out here for 45 minutes doing the exact same thing over and over. I don't ski for three hours. I was on the water less than an hour yesterday. All right, that's good. Send me home. Uh, all right, all here. right. You know, I don't ride my motorcycle for four hundred miles. You know, it's like, oh my goodness, like I just don't want to. I don't get it, man. I really don't. I, I, it's, it's like I don't even understand it anymore. Like I did when I was in college because I didn't have anything else to do. I didn't have mm-hmm. anybody else around. Mm-hmm. But like I'm home. I'm sitting on the porch, seventy-five degrees, for free. And I, to think about, I'm going to get up, leave these people, and go for four hours or more out, drive over, go to the desk, get in the car, whoosh, whoosh, 18 times and drive home and pay for it. I think that it's just so hard to imagine doing that. All right. All right. <laughs> That's the answer. I, nothing's uh, changed for you? Like, I, you, no, no, I how like do it. you get off the couch to go? With, like, all that we do in our life, the moment I have to sit down, mm-hmm. I don't want to go ride around a cart. It's a, it's like a um, mental wind down for me. I all wish, right. I wish I could explain it, but part of it is mm-hmm. I, I do love being outside. Yeah, in the summertime. Yeah, fall, I, I agree with too. that. Yeah, so, I, and there is a natural beauty in golf courses and nature. So, I think that part is is really cool. Um, that the, is cool. The, the, that ch- is. The ch- there's a challenge of it. Like it's 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 one of the harder sports in in the world because you just have to. It's nearing the heart. Constantly stay with it. It's it's men- it, mentally and you more can, physically and than you mentally. can be great and yeah. then one second later and, it's over. Yeah. and you don't know why and yeah. you can't get it back. But I don't know, like it's like it is is a mental recharge for me. I wish I could fully explain it. Like I can I can be physically tired but mentally recharged from that. Um All right. I don't know. I don't know. Um the challenge of it is fun, but I also like I so I started this is going too far, too long. It's going a long I time. started I hope people are interested in my who career. we are in this way. I started my otherwise they've clicked off by now. <laughs> right. I started my career trying to work in the golf industry. So I will say weirdly enough, then it was there was pressure to be good and to compete and to yeah, did, like yeah. keep up to yeah. something. Yeah, that's right. Country club life. You, yeah. You were in so when that, that was over, yeah. it was almost like the when the pressure was gone for me to go, I can just go out and play. Yeah. It actually doubled in enjoyment. And I was like, dude, this is awesome. Like I can just come out here and if I if I rip one into the woods, I, nobody cares anymore. Yeah, Where sure. back then there was like whatever. Anyway, I don't know. I love it. It's 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 literally my thing. Like it's my Yeah, you're my, yeah, you're a golfer. My, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, straight I am. Up golfer. I enjoy it. And I, you know, I, yeah, it's like, what'd you tell those guys why I wasn't there? Because he hates it. 
I said he hates golf. Yeah, yeah you're right. That's yeah. the answer. I, I said hate he, you know he supports Dan and we we always support love Dan, Dan, but he uh, absolutely hates golf. And I said you don't want to play with him for 18 holes. I don't. <laughs> no, no, no. You the other people. Oh, the don't other want to people. Play with West. I don't want to play holes. with myself. No, for I know. Holes. I don't, don't. want to do anything. Like it, it's like I just yeah don't want to do that. Yeah. All right. It's it's torturous. <laughs> Let's get into uh, discipleship. So uh, within the message. People may have heard it or not. It doesn't necessarily matter. Give it, give it, give me a thirty-second breakdown of your message from Sunday, mm-hmm. and then we'll, I'll kind of drop out to the discipleship portion. Yeah, uh, mission of the church is what yeah. I wanted to preach. New building, you yeah. know, big celebration. I wanted to refocus on what we are uh-huh. and why we are. And we've said for for years, we we are here. We draw it from the Bible. We are here to preach the Word of God. We are here to preach the gospel. We are to baptize those that respond to the gospel, and we are to make disciples of all nations. Yeah. How? Teaching them to observe all that Jesus commanded. There's mm-hmm. a lot within that, but it right. was preach, baptize, disciple. Right. Okay. So uh, discipleship, you know, in discipleship can mean a lot of things. You can be a disciple of anything. You can be a slalom, ski, disciple, or whatever, but it basically right. means a learner You're or right. a follower. So. Uh, just for, obviously mm-hmm. for context, when we say that, we're, we're talking about a disciple of Christ. Now, what is the difference to you, somebody between a Christian and a disciple? Do you see much of a difference? How would you, how would you define that? Well, there shouldn't be. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, a Christian is a disciple in some form. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people are, you know, I guess this is a funny territory because it's hard to understand it. Even it's hard to even be sure of the certain things. Right, right. Some people that are Christians may only be converts, mm-hmm. right? So they have responded to the gospel by mm-hmm. faith in Jesus. That technically numbers them as a disciple, mm-hmm. in a way, mm-hmm. meaning like you you've at least come to the knowledge of the gospel and obeyed, repent, and believe in the gospel, the yeah. command of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, but no. Uh, a convert does not necessarily a disciple make. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, and that's... so they 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 do not learn, they do not grow, they do not study, they right. do not walk this Christian life. Right. And so then, but it, then it returns to a question: if that goes on for a long time, mm-hmm. are they a Christian to begin with? Like, how can one, you know, the gospel and the response to it in discipleship are not disconnected? It's yeah. it's a it's like a it's an interconnected organism. Yeah, it's, it's it's not yeah. a lot of people say. Well, there are it's this part of the Great Commission mm-hmm. as though they can be parsed up, and I understand what they mean by that, and we do it too. I even preach it that way, but it, it is not a part. It is you know it it is either all or it's kind of all or nothing, mm-hmm. and that reveals if you're a Christian or not in a way. Yeah, Eww. yeah, no, that that's good. What would you say a disciple looks like? You, if you're saying somebody comes to you and go, "Man, I want to follow Jesus," what would a disciple of Jesus look like mm-hmm. to you? Yeah, I mean, there would be fruit in. Ke- I'm using some Bible language yeah. here from certain scriptures, but there would be fruit in keeping with repentance. Okay, tell tell people what that means. Uh, you used to be angry. You used to be a liar. You mm-hmm. used to be a cuss mouth. You used to be greedy. All of a sudden, these things start falling off because mm-hmm. the Bible says that if you have truly come to know Christ, you've been given a new nature. You've been mm-hmm. transformed by the renewing of your mind. So there would be fruit of transformation. You start to talk different. Hey, I noticed something different about you. Yeah. Uh, you start to respond different. Hey, yeah. man, you're not as hostile as you used to be. Hey, man, you don't seem to care about money as much as you used to be. You seem to be more generous. You know, like the fruit in keeping with repentance. So you've repented of sin and believed in the gospel. Mm-hmm. And then that begins to bear fruit of repentance of your personal life. Okay. Then you start to learn and observe all that Jesus commanded according to the word of God. So not only do you just have fruit in keeping with repentance, you begin to walk and look like Jesus in the world, a light in the darkness. Um, you, you know, you again, I don't want to just monologue, but... Yeah, yeah. Okay, so one of the things that you said in, in the sermon, too, and I, you and I both understand this philosophy, believe this, every church is going to be a little bit different, yeah. you know, and how that kind of looks, but you talked about programs, specific mm-hmm. programs, yeah. and your answer was... You are the program. You the are Bible the Bible is the curriculum, yeah. and wherever <clears throat> you do life is the lo- time and location. Right. So, you know, I want to talk about that a little bit more because, um, I've, you know, like... In, in principle, I, I definitely agree with you, but a lot a lot of people will see 
whatever, our, our, a church, our church, and say, you know, I see a lot of baptisms, I see a lot of salvations, this is cool, but where, where are the discipleship? Mm-hmm. Where is this discipleship happening? Right. Uh, and for us, you know, it's one of those things that, I've always said this, like it, it is a harder thing to measure. A guy goes up there and gets baptized. You see that. You see it. Like, you I count mean, it. Just count it. Okay, that that's cool. He, he's put his faith in Christ. He's now showing that step of obedience in baptism in front of hundreds of people. A discipleship, you know, disciple a disciple, somebody who is following, number one, like it, it's a constant thing. Mm-hmm. So you're the pastor of this church, been here for 15-something years. You are still... In discipleship, in the sense that yeah, absolutely. I'm still trying to learn, I'm still trying to grow, I'm still oh, trying man. to understand. Yeah. And so, you know, I've said this, there's, um, everybody has a different step of where that would be. And I think based on their life, you know, we can't always know, like, is this person being disi- discipled? We know because we have a relationship with them. Like you say, right. you are the program. And so, yeah, go ahead. I Well, I feel like people sometimes think like, well, there needs there, like it's a class that you. It, I was always kind of brought up that it's a class yeah. you graduate from. Now you're a disciple. Yeah. And so people could count. Hey, Scott, who are you discipling? So you're going through an eight week thing right. with right. Joe. Right. And so, hey, Joe, here's your thing. I completed, you know, the Johnson discipleship yeah. program. <laughs> yeah. And here's his signature. And now Joe goes and gets a guy and goes through an eight week program. Now, I don't want to mock or criticize mm-hmm. methodology that mm-hmm. whereby people are learning the Bible. I can't stand programs, honestly, of most kinds. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have what's, you know, the Bible says do things decently and in order. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. even Sunday morning is a program sort of in and of itself. People know to be here at nine or 11 o'clock. And yeah. I get it, but like, I don't like counting by way of programs i i would prefer the only way something is real to me even gospel i don't even like gospel programs like Mm -hmm. what program it it needs either if it is real it is your lifestyle Mm -hmm. you are so if people say i see people getting saved i see people getting baptized where's the discipleship well how do you think those people came to know the gospel and got baptized that guy over there shared the gospel at work because he's a disciple and that's the one baptizing the person like they don't see that part because you can count the guy baptizing the guy or the lady Mm -hmm. and they would not have shared the gospel if they weren't if it wasn't a part of their lifestyle because they're a disciple so that's what i mean by and people don't put all that together that where's the discipleship class well you know and i get i mean we do have a I could answer that question. We have stuff all midweek long. We have small groups and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm not even trying to be defensive. I'm saying yeah. we could answer all of that. But to me, that doesn't even... If you have those classes packed, I don't even know if it's if you know that it's real mm-hmm. until they walk that out somewhere out there in the world on their own. Mm-hmm. They Because... Okay, I'm pretty, kind of monologuing. Maybe I've had a second cup of coffee. <laughs> Got mad about golf and now I'm out yeah, of coffee. Yeah, you are still so, mad about golf. So I, here's the thing. I told a guy yesterday... He was, you know, questioning something. It was great. Again, this is how discipleship right, looks. I'm not right. like the disciple maker guy, yeah. but like I, I got this younger guy in his early 20s. He, I have lunch with him sometimes, and he's got questions about his life and fruit of repentance and growing mm-hmm. in the Lord. And he's like, hey, man, can we meet up again? So I met him yesterday, and we were talking about it. And and I said, look, man, there are some people should stop going to all the church programs. There are people mm-hmm. that will come on Sunday to one service, serve at the next service. Have somebody over a small group on Sunday night. Maybe they do nothing Monday. Then they're at the men's or women's group on Tuesday. Then they serve in the children, you know, some youth mm-hmm. thing on Wednesday. Then they're at the marriage group on Thursday. I, I don't think that's good. I wish they'd stop doing that. Like, what are you doing? Like, when are you just doing this in your? And so, and my point was, you can do all of those things and not really be with God mm-hmm. at all. You mm-hmm. can be involved in things about God and busy your life. And look like, man, I am being discipled right. and not walking that out. When it's a lifestyle right. is when you really see it. And so we want to see people walking with people and having stories and in the grind and wading through things in their marriage and sitting down at coffee <clears throat> shops and working through difficult 
things and joyous occasions and how do I be a parent? You, you know, yeah, I, this I'm, is my philosophy. This is yeah. one guy's belief. And so that's why people don't see constant programs because I think you share this a little bit. And so I, yeah, we constantly push this on people and they're like, well, where's the class and the numbers? Yeah. And, and like you said, we do have plenty of ways for people to get connected. So maybe somebody's coming and they, they, what the point of that really is going, Somebody's a new believer. I don't even know where to start. Like, what do I, what do I yeah. even do? Yeah, so, like, okay. okay, great. We want to connect you, but what all we are doing is we're not connecting you to a program. In, in all honesty, we're connecting you to people, to people right. who have given their life to right. Christ and might have walked this out a little bit longer. Some yeah. of them not necessarily so, but that that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to connect you to people. Some of the best stories that ever happen here are when we see baptisms of. People that we have never met. That's right. And the uh, their their specific person is the one baptizing this them. We've happens had, almost. I'm a not lot. even trying to be like a lot. this is to the Lord's praise. Almost weekly. Yeah. You see, so there there it is. So if someone wants to count it, where, where's the discipleship? Right. Well, right. Where else are you seeing that? Yeah, I'm not yeah, saying yeah. there's nowhere else, but where have you? You know, I yeah. didn't grow up in a culture like that. The pastor did all the baptisms, and they went through some class yeah. that wasn't necessary, and all yeah. this stuff. But now you see. Like, yeah. So I think I think that that is a good way to look at it. Look at all of the people, non-staff people that have baptized somebody. Yeah. How does that happen? That happens when they call you or me or somebody on staff and say, "Hey, I've been talking to so and so. They know the Lord. They want to be baptized." Mm-hmm. And half the time, you and I haven't even met this person. They've no. been coming to the church for a month or maybe in a group for a month, something like that. And we're like, "Dude, that's awesome. Yep. Come, bring them on Sunday." Uh, we'll coordinate it, and and you're going to baptize them. You are going to baptize them, and most of the people are excited about it right. because, and I, when I, when people call, we get a lot of phone calls and emails, which I love about just hey, I want to be baptized. What what's the what's the process here? What do I do? I always ask them who's who's that person in your life, like who has been mm-hmm. that mentor to you, and most of the time they can say this person, this person, and it's it's somebody in the church. Um, and, and you and I are doing the same thing too, but we're a mm-hmm. tiny number yeah. compared to all, all that we have out yeah. there. So you and I have baptized specific people that we Absolutely. have been ones that are that are mentoring. So I think that's um, that's a that's a huge thing to see. But yeah, I kind of want to reiterate that. Yes, we have places to plug people into, but our our intention with that is to get you connected with people. People. Yeah. And walk yeah. outside of wherever that class is. We yeah. do have all when I say I don't like programs, that doesn't mean we mute don't have any programs. Yeah. We have sometimes I think we maybe have too, too many. Maybe sometimes too I many. think we You're got right. too many. Yeah. Like but but <clears throat> so we we got uh we be getting us some programs, you know, yeah. for every from an infant to somebody that's right. eighty five years old, right. all the way through, all right. week <laughs> long. It, it almost too many. But like fine, fine and good. To me, that that does not prove a single disciple. Yeah, it pro- it, it it makes you look at those people. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're maybe hungry for the word of God. Sometimes people are just at church because they got nowhere else to be. Yeah, and that's not always the best. But no, like, it's, it's not a different always, conversation. No. And I like, think you that have community out there of believers. Mm-hmm. That's where the church really happens in your life, at your job, in your living room. That's where it happens. Absolutely. And if it's not happening there, and you just come and attend and sit and listen, walk away. I don't know. That's to me. That's not discipleship. So where's the discipleship class? When did it become a class? I didn't see. Jesus. No, Jesus didn't do it. Right. He's walking. Peter, put your sword away, man. That's not how it works. Like right. he's doing it. Right. It's weird to me because the programs. A lot of people maybe want or think or the paradigm would be the right word of the modern yeah. day church and how they do yeah. discipleship is not found in the scripture it's no, like it's foreign totally right. to the bible yeah, so yeah, like yeah. where did that ever happen well yeah i can understand wanting to put a structure on it i, I don't know in in the eight week discipleship thing that you're kind of talking about i can i can respect the mindset behind that i i think i, I think and we have that we have the we wrote a little yeah. curriculum for right. people to use, like here. Right, right. But there is definitely a danger in, and I'm not saying every, everybody does this. Like you can have a great, a great teacher, a great disciple who understands that and, and talks through that. But if there's a danger in going, go through this eight week class, and you are now your disciple, now. a disciple. Like th- that is a very weird, a weird thought. And you know, in so so many different people, based on their backgrounds or age or whatever. Like their 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 next step of discipleship is is going to be totally different. 
So you put them in that class or whatever, and they're yeah. like, ah, I'm struggling to find my spot. You know, I've been baptized. I've been connected. It is, it is the whole thing of learning and growing, maturing in Christ and, and understanding. And, yeah, there's no, there also, there's, there's, there's no end to it, first of all. So it's almost like, you know how, you know how back in the day people had you pray a prayer and sign a card and you were a Christian now? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. No, you're not. Right. I mean, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Right, maybe. But that, but that does not. Does, but, like, when yeah. did you become a Christian? Oh, when I was at this youth mm-hmm. camp, and the, they, they scared us to death and had us sign a card, and, mm-hmm. and, and that's when I was a Christian. Never bore any fruit of repentance whatsoever for the last 30 years. Mm-hmm. You know, well, I'm a Christian because I got this card. This mm-hmm. is when I got saved. I have a card like that. You do? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Did Jesus sign it? <clears throat> Jesus signed it. Mine's real. <laughs> <laughs> But I feel like it's the, the discipleship is the same kind of thing. Yeah. Can be, can be, right? Could could people get saved from a prayer? Sure they right, did. Right. Sure they did. Some right. did. Yeah. Could people, you know, does that the discipleship program or curriculum have a benefit? Sure it can. But th- to say here, you're a Christian, here, you're now a disciple at a mm-hmm. at a like a, a completion of something is not right. what the Bible teaches. And right. so I I would compare it to evangelism. Okay, so yeah. we don't do it with evangelism either, and meaning we don't go knocking doors going, hey, man, could I interrupt your life awkwardly mm-hmm. and, you know, force my way into your living room and ask you three questions? Mm-hmm. You know, well, how do you, you know, where's your evangelism program? We tell people to go share the gospel, yeah. or you're not walking as a Christian in yeah. the world. Yeah. So they do, and you hear stories, and people get baptized. And we wouldn't call it. We wouldn't want an evangelism program either, where you go knock on doors, and they come, and you go, "Hey, man, if you were to die today, yeah, did, could people be moved by that? I'm sure it's happened. Right. I don't right. think that's the move because I don't see that in the Bible either. Right. I see people. He says Paul reasoned in the marketplace, and conversations came about naturally. So. Mm-hmm. I, you know, in, in a way, saying it the right way, I'm trying to be careful not mm-hmm. to blow everything up. Or um, we, we don't have a program for any of that stuff because there wasn't. It's a li- It's a Christian life. Life, yeah, yeah. It, and it also makes you think sometimes. Somebody could think this way that th- that's the, that's the culture that we're trying to fight against. Christianity is one hour on a Sunday, yeah. right? And yeah, classes and yeah, times and right. slots. Yeah. And, 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 and so then what we do is we separate the other six days of the week. Yep. This is my work week or this is my hobby week yep. and this is my worship time. Yes. That is absolutely the, the against the idea that we want to project in that. Like You're right. It is an entire lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So whatever, you're slalom skiing, I'm golfing. Like our life should constantly be about that. Does that mean that you are evangelizing every second of the day? No, but sort of because Absolutely. your life should be, you right? You should be. Yes. You should be. Not necessarily verbally in the sense of, yeah, but yeah. yes, you're of course. You're, you were caring for people. We're loving people. Um, we're shepherding our family well. Like mm-hmm. that is all a big part of it. Yeah, so we, we, we want to dismiss that idea of sep- separating those segments of your life. And, you know, and people... I don't know why we're good at doing that. I don't know if it's our culture or Christianity, but we can go, you know, these are my work days, these are my off hours, mm-hmm. these are my hobby hours, and this is my this is my church time, you know. And um that's, and that's yeah. not that's not the thing. Right. And and I do think we're fighting against a, a, a paradigm for deeply rooted. Mm-hmm. Um so the people I, I skied with, they're yeah. they're they're newer to the rock, yeah. they're about seventy years old, retired. Okay. And we were talking, you know, whatever. I yeah. told you, you call me. They're, they're very new. I, I like getting to know new people and stuff. So he called me, and uh, I was out there for like an hour. And I go, uh, it was, I go, they're like, man, it's a beautiful day. I was floating in the water, had to ski with the rope in my hand. It was, like, come on, it was mm-hmm. magic. It was, mm-hmm. You can't imagine how much better than a golf course it was. Guy. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, man, this is great. And I'm like, I'm like, this is, I'm like, people are going to, this I said, if people knew this was happening or whatever, I made some crack. I'm like, this is why people think I only work one day a week. <laughs> and the lady says, she goes, you're shepherding right now, Pastor Wes. Yeah. And, and, I'm, and I got in the boat, 
and of course I was hurt, so I couldn't ski anymore. And we, I, you know, we idled back for a while. And yeah. he was talking about discipleship. We oh, had really? A, yeah, we had a, a, a decent conversation as we made our way back. Yeah. The point being, that is, in my mind, that was a success for that day of kind of shepherding people. Kind of, that's yeah. how I make disciples or try. Yeah. That's how I want to avail myself. I don't, I don't like. I teach classes, but and that helps. But right. I don't look at these people and go, "Wow, there's 40 people here." Right. Uh, I'm discipling 40 people. That's right. not how I look at it at all. Right. Right. Yeah, and the the point of teaching Sunday, whatever whatever day of the week is, too, is also to to go do. Like you think about, like honestly, what is Sunday morning for? Mm-hmm. It's kind of a, it's kind of a celebration, a, a reminder, a get together. Um, rejuvenate, whatever, yeah. whatever you want to call it. It's, yeah. it's it's a rah-rah session to say, this is great. Go go do that for the next six days of the week. So yep. when you're learning, and people can be, I think with good intentions, you had, you had mentioned this, and like an over-learner. Like, and they just, you know, the over-studier is always in these Bible studies type of a thing. Yeah. Never actually caring, caring for people. You can be that. I don't want to criticize the studious no. personality that yeah, yeah, loves yeah. to constantly learn. So if you're out I don't, there, I, God, don't, I don't mean it that way. I just yeah. want to say that because sometimes yeah. I say things and people take it the wrong way. I'm right. not saying that. There are, you know, students out there. They're just a hardwired student, mm-hmm. and they do bear fruit in their life of other people. But you're also right. People, probably some people that are different than that are constantly studying and sitting in classes. Maybe you need to find somewhere else to be because no matter how many classes you are, you can't really look behind you and find the last few people that have been in your living room really going through a storm where you walked with them for months. Through. Yeah. That's the real deal. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm not done with this. I have questions about this. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. This is the number one thing I get criticized on. And I, I, I honestly... I'm openly trying to figure it out. Like, mm-hmm. I can't quite figure this out. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's because we don't have the same paradigm as mm-hmm. we grew up with. I don't know if we, do some, if we don't have something called a discipleship class. I don't know if it's, mm-hmm. I don't say it a lot or something. Like, I, when I look around the church, this one, where, look, there's opportunity for everything from evangelism all the way through. I understand that. I see disciples being made like crazy. People being pulled out of the county jail that have repented to the gospel, yeah, baptized, and are now with godly men and women yeah, walking. Yeah. Together. I'm shaking their hands on Sunday, look, right. and they're next to their disciple maker. Right, you know, sitting with them, loving them. Right, I I could name a lot of people. A and lot, I, yeah. And I feel it bothers me. I don't get. I don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. I I don't I don't I literally can't understand it. I. I don't have, you know, a multitude of sermons that are like 55 aspects of discipleship. I don't know if that's what people are looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm preaching through entire books of the Bible that take years. I don't. What do you think it is? People are, And then people say this to me. I know you love evangelism, Pastor. We got, what are you talking about? Be, yeah, I, so- I, I do, but like. Evangelism is so connected with discipleship that right, you know, so so connected. That's uh, I I think the reason is because you can't. This is my this is my philosophy. That because you cannot put a literal check mark number on it, like the baptism or somebody told you. You know, I gave my life to the Lord. I think that's the reason, and because they are used to, maybe not used to, have seen some form of a of a discipleship program program meaning they walked through these, mm-hmm. these things. here's where you sign up mm-hmm. church membership we're not huge on church membership no. so that's an that's an uh an easier way to i guess align somebody with saying hey are you are you in this system are you in this style of beliefs that can feel to somebody like i i made it through so i, th- I think that's the reason but i would say you know we do look look at the c- come on sunday morning Look at the hundreds of people sitting around you and realize every single one of those people has a story. Mm-hmm. You and I could go back to people in our life that helped shape and form who we are today. Of course. And are we sitting next to them every Sunday? Not necessarily so, but that that is definitely happen- happening. We talk about other people that are baptizing. Uh, we do have something coming out to that we've been working on for several months. We call them our stories. It's just people 
t- video testimony of talking about like yeah how they've That's come cool. along. So um, I th- I just want people to see those things. It's the perception. Like realize, think about what what is, what does that mean to you? Do we have an eight week check mark class? No, we don't. Nor are we going to. And for churches that do, that's that is okay. We're not even trying that's to criticize. Fine. I don't have time understand. to criticize anybody so, else. But yeah. yeah, that's not. I don't get it, man. Yeah. Like I get it, but I don't get it. I've tried to get it too. Like I've tried yeah. to like. What are they saying? Yeah. And then it's weird. Like they'll turn and they'll become critical of evangelism. Like as if it's something different something or different. something. Yeah. And then they act like I'm only talking to lost people like all the time. <laughs> Can I go back? And I've literally gone back. I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, all right. I'm, I want to hear the body. I want to hear what they say. I don't want to be the guy that can't hear anything. Mm-hmm. And I go back and look at the archive of sermons. I'm like, I, I don't, I don't know what to say. I, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't. It's not like I'm like, hey, you know, for God so loved the world that he, every week, mm-hmm. and and don't say. I mean, we've covered swaths of scripture. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I. I I've. You know what I'm talking about? I, I know what you're it's, talking it's about. There's mi- the, the, it's the mystery of the universe to me. Yeah. And, and as if we don't care, or people have said, uh, and I, you know, many people, I'm not trying to call anybody, I'm not trying to be mean about it, but people have been like, well, it's got to come from the top. Well, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I do, and I go back to the things I've said and things I've preached, and and it's threaded in there all the time. And it, but I, I don't. I think they're looking for. They they already have something they're looking for, and they're not seeing that thing, so they can't see the other way or something. That, that's, that's right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, they they cannot see what it is they're defining as a disciple. So I guess I'm I'm going to say two things. One is, look 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 for other ways. Just look, realize when you sit in a crowd of what, however many people are out there. Think about this. Every single one of those people have a story, and I would mm-hmm. say, you you want to know? Go meet new people, l- learn their story. You will find out that it is happening. Number two is there are there are styles of preaching that are going to be consistent, whatever. So you have a consistent style of preaching because that's who you are. Yeah, sure. So if there's a mindset of going, I need to see this type of thing. It doesn't matter who it is. This is no criticism to you or anybody. It doesn't matter who it is. Fine, Everybody it has is. a style. Yeah. And so if you listen to one guy 50 weeks out of the year, all right. you're going to be missing some things that you're going, I was looking for this or I'm looking oh, for sure. this. Oh, sure, yeah. That's yeah. all I'm saying. And yeah. it's not related to discipleship or not. If I preach 45 times a year, there would be other criticisms of going, man, he doesn't hit on this portion enough. And they are correct in that. They are correct, I, I, yes. And I am... Yeah. Very much an evangelist, mm-hmm. but that does not like I do see. I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm I'm also equally mm-hmm. discipleship guy, and you're missing it. Right. But you're missing a little bit, and then so then you do this thing, right? You so we have well, that's why you should, the Bible indicates that you should have a multitude of elders yeah. and a variety yeah. of teachers, more than just one guy. I realize I'm kind of the primary guy, but I mm-hmm. I, I I try to do that. So then we do that, and then some people come and they go. We don't like it when you're not preaching. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> I'm right? Like, oh, right. Like, yeah, I, like come on, guys! Yeah. Like it, it's like yesterday you're telling me you got to preach something different. Like mm-hmm. you're not preaching everything that we want you to preach, and then so somebody else preaches something different. We're like, mm-hmm. we we wanted you to do that. Like, mm-hmm. I'm yeah. not trying to like rant about the church. I love the church, yeah. and it's overall it's very exciting and healthy. I just I'm trying to get people to see some things here. Like it's. Right. Right. No. So yeah, I'd ask people look, look just look in other ways, look in, in stuff that maybe you're not you're not used to looking for that specific check mark. Uh, but also at the same time, we're not claiming we have it like this this perfect system. Absolutely That's our not. understanding of philosophy. Absolutely so not. if somebody could come to us and say, "Well, let me tell you why this program would be extremely beneficial," I would listen to that. Um, that has happened. It has not it, would. It has. You're happened. right. You're People right. People have come. That. Can I teach a class on evangelism? You preach Absolutely. the gospel. You push yeah. us to go be a witness. Yeah. Some people don't know the practicality as to how. And we were right. like, sure. It was packed. Right. Packed. Somebody told me yesterday. Right. I was in Paul Reggio's evangelism yeah. class. Man, it really helped me. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And we have those. Adam's doing an overview of the Bible. We have right more now. of those. Yeah. More more than people might know Mm -hmm. maybe so yeah i think maybe sometimes from the stage whatever they're looking for more practical ways but people Mm -hmm. that are that are um 
in this body, they'll begin to know those things. Ask, ask those questions. Maybe we don't always do the best job of communicating, but, but all again, of that. I mean, we, had, we certainly got blind spots. Yeah. I'll take that yeah. all day. I, yeah. I agree with that. And I'm going to say this last because we got to close this, this bad boy out. If you have a burden out there and you say, man, I do, I do want to teach a class and I see the benefit of it, I would say reach, reach out to me and I would gladly meet with you and we can, we can discuss that. That mm-hmm. happens all the time. I do not like to personally, I don't like to do blanket classes and then have fill in people that don't have that drive for it. When people come and mm-hmm. say, this is what I want to do. I say, awesome. You're going to teach this class. Let's go. I'll right. set it up for you. And that's how the majority of our, our things go. So you bring a good point. If someone does feel a burden, yeah, like someone out there, I get what you're saying, mm-hmm. but we mm-hmm. could also make it yeah. stronger by this. Well, buddy, maybe, or ma'am, you, maybe that means you're yeah, the yeah. person to make it stronger. Right, right. So Part being, of you being, being the disciple makers that we want to be, yeah, that yeah. would be us coming along you and empowering you. Absolutely. Because so a lot of people, they're like, you know, they have this idea that we didn't have, and yes. they're like, yep. you guys should do this. Well, I don't even know what you're talking about, I w- and I don't care like you care about that specific thing, and that's why you're a part of the body. So have at it. Yeah. Open your living room. We'll be happy to tell people. Yeah. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, abso- it's abso- like- absolutely. That's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Be, be a part of the solution. That's what that is part. What we mean by you are the program. Yeah. Yeah. So come yeah. And, yeah. It doesn't have to be the church staff and um, all that. So I, I wish I hope people listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we didn't I would imagine they golf did. and water skiing. So yeah, I, we talked about golf too much water skiing. But all right. We're going to close this bad boy out. If you guys have questions, comments, thoughts, um, even concerns with, you know, things we said or ideas about stuff, we are more than happy to listen to those. Send those our way. I'd love to have conversations and meetings. And um, but we do. We have it. We do have a desire to see disciples in this church. One hundred percent. There's. There's no. If, if we don't, it's not a church. Right. Like we're, we're. It's a miserable failure. Of course yeah. we do. Yeah. Cool. As always, don't take our word for it. Be in his, and we'll see you next time on The Encore.